Reverend Dr. Melvin Brown, my good friend and brother over the years, Reverend R. Clinton Washington of the Jerusalem Baptist Church, to his brother, Reverend Maxwell Washington, and to the other pulpit brethren that fellow co-laborers, both in the pulpit and in the audience, to our guest deacons and deacons from this great church, to the members of this church and to visiting friends from across the city, we greet you in the name of the Lord. I'm very happy to be back in this pulpit again. Sister Green has taken off her cap. We were here last time. Amen. Deacon Beatty is still going strong. He met me at the airport, brought me in in that glorious white chariot. <laughs> and I told him that if he did miss Hepman, don't get to ride in that chariot up there. He already had his ride down there. <laughs> Down here. Have y'all been in that car? Got a spare tire on the back. A, that's some automobile. Amen. Deacon O'Neill, I know it's gonna be some noise kept up here tonight, so nobody but me and you be hollering. It's gonna, gonna be some hollering going on here. We make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Yeah. That's right. These cameras are running so that the world who don't go to church <laughs> might see how we enjoy church. <laughs> I would not want to send out a false impression of the church <laughs> because you decided not to react and respond. Well, there are those who might would see the tape and get the impression that we don't enjoy our religion. So we must let the world know via these videotapes that we do enjoy our tape as they enjoy MTV and all of those other ones. They, they seem to be having a good time, don't they? That's right. I think that uh, we would want to do that. Now I have some people here from Buffalo, New York. Is that right? Uh, Shalona Baker, Mike Barr, Elizabeth Harris. Would you stand? Praise the Lord. Give them a hand. All right. These are some fine young people, and I'm so happy to see them that they came over to be with me tonight, and we're going to chat right after church, get to know a little more about them. Amen. I'm so happy to see them here. Uh, I need you to see some family I have here. My mother has a sister in this city that you know that's been here for a long time, and uh, I want you to see her. Sister Luster is a member of the Jerusalem Baptist Church want her to stand. That's my mother's only sister. And she has a daughter that's here and her husband, Sister Joyce Luster and Deacon Walter Johnson. Sister Joyce Johnson. Members of the Antioch Baptist Church. She has a son and a daughter-in-law here. That's uh, Brother Edgar Luster and his wife, Isa. Amen. Isa hails all the way from Brazil. And, uh, Brother Luster is going to be our tape man this week. If you want copies of Watch Them Dogs, Good Man's Hard to Find, Run and Tell That, Got What You Wanted, Lost What You Had, all of those tapes, Brother Luster is the man you want to see. Now, tonight our tapes will be downstairs because he got here a little late. Each night after that, we'll have them convenient right out for you in the lobby area, but tonight, if you need a copy of the dogs and you showing up, don't think you're going to be able to get back. Don't leave here. Focus in to me. I'm getting your letters and cards from all over, 
having me to mail them to you and ship them to you. You can get them while they're here. And this is the only thing I know that has not gone up since last year. The price was $7 last year, and it's $7 this year. We haven't even added the inflation cost. Down there, $9.95 in the record store. So uh, I'm expecting you to buy them and grow so you can mail them to your friends for Christmas presents. <laughs> Do your Christmas shopping with me this week. All right? There's a gentleman here that he and I met when I was 18 years old, and we've been firm friends ever since then. We both hail from the Red Hills of the South, and we were young men together out at Bowling Air Force Base, and that's Mr. Fido Brown. I want him to stand that you might see Fido. You can see from 18 to now, we both have come a long ways, haven't we? They're fine, and Van Hay and I have a close fellowship. His family are all of the church folk, and uh, I'm so happy. Whenever I'm in this city for the last 20 years, he's always been coming out to be with us, and uh, I'm very happy to see him again tonight. I thank you for coming in such large numbers, and this week we hope to have a great time together. These men are going to be with us this week, and they are going to record on tape what we do here this week. Uh, the world needs to see how we serve the Lord. Yeah. If we got dead deacons, then the world's going to see it. <laughs> if we got dead preachers, then the world's going to see it. Yeah. Amen. If we got dead choir members and dead members, then the world's going to see it. I came to expose you before the world. On how you serve the law. Now I understand you're all from South Carolina, is that right? You're all from South Carolina, then y'all ought to know what I'm getting ready to do. Y'all ought to know something about this. And I'm going to ask y'all to join in with me if you can and if you will and help us in the wording out of verse or two of this hymn. I, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. About rules. 
Can you say that? Roots. The TV series and the book by Alex Haley has made us as a people conscious of our background. Isn't that right? We are not ashamed of our slave heritage anymore. Isn't that right? We now even call ourselves African American. Isn't that right? We are more conscious of our history. Can I get a witness? And the contribution that our forefathers made. Isn't that right? Schools have made African American children feel ashamed and made them feel second class. Isn't that right? They have not taught in our public schools the truth about our contribution to America. But let us look at our roots. Can I get a witness here? The contribution that we have made to this country. Pedro Alonzo Nino, a black Spaniard, was a pilot on one of the ships when Columbus discovered America. In 1830, when the first steam locomotive rolled down a track, the fireman on that locomotive was a slave. Crispus Adams was the first man to shed blood for this country. Isn't that right? He was shot and killed on March the 5th, 1770, in Boston, Massachusetts, what was commonly known as the Boston Tea Party. Peter Salem fought at Bunker Hill. Y'all remember Bunker Hill from your history book. Track Sisson and Black Samson, both were slaves and distinguished themselves as heroes during the war for independence. That's been a long time ago, ain't it? During the Civil War, 186,000 black men fought for the Union Army and over 38 thousand of them died. Yes. We fought at Gettysburg. Yes. That's not in the history book. Uh-huh. We fought at Points Bridge, New York. Yes. We also fought at the Battle of Philadelphia uh-huh. and in other fields of battle. Yes. I'm talking about our roots now. Yes. Doing World War One. Over 50,000 African Americans saw combat, and over 250,000 were in the United States Army. Can I get a witness here? They saw action in Italy, in Germany, and they were so fierce that the German soldiers nicknamed them Hell Fighters. During World War II, Over one million African-American men and women served on active duty in the armed forces. We remember World War II, don't we? Some of our heroes were Dolly Miller, who died at Pearl Harbor on the battleship Arizona. Dolly Miller was a cook who came up on deck of the ship after it had been bombarded and took over a machine gun, 
or an anti-aircraft gun that he had never been trained to fly and shot down three Japanese planes before he was killed on deck of that ship. I'm talking about our roots tonight. Colonel Benjamin O. Davis commanded the 99th Pursuit Squadron. These black pilots who were trained at Tuskegee, Alabama, flew over 3,000 missions in Europe, and they shot down over 300 German planes. The 761st Tank Battalion, the 92nd Infantry Division, the Red Ball Express. You remember these outfits? The 93rd Division, the 24th Infantry, and the 234th Anti-Aircraft Artillery, all were black outfits that saw active duty and combat. We need to know our history, don't we? Daniel Hale Williams uh, was the first man to do heart surgery, open heart surgery. He was a black man. Dr. Charles Drew was a black man, the first man to discover blood plasma, uh, the first man that invented a traffic light was an African-American. Can I get a, a witness yet? Uh, an African-American was with Perry when he set foot on the North Pole, where never a human had ever stood before. His name was Matthew Henson. We need to know our roots. Isn't that right? Arizona and Nebraska, both of these states were discovered and explored by African Americans. Can I get a witness? We need to know our roots. We need not only to know our history, but we need to know our family tree. Isn't that right? Because of illegitimacy, many children do not know their father's side of the family. But I come to tell you tonight, there is no such thing as illegitimacy. Can I get a witness here? All birth is legitimate in the sight of God. The baby may be illegal because his mother and father may not have a legal piece of paper. But I come to tell you that the child is legitimate. Isn't that right? We, we, we need to stop uh, talking about illegitimacy. The Hebrew nation prided itself. You gonna pray with me? On its genealogy. They would often say, we have Abraham for our father. Isn't that right? Matthew, the gospel writer, traces the genealogy of Jesus all the way back to Abraham. Because Abraham was the father of the Hebrew race. Can I get a witness? And Matthew was a Jew. But Luke traces the genealogy of Jesus all the way back to Adam. Because Adam was the father of the human race. Isn't that right? The, the Jew, the Jew, I tell you, prided himself in knowing his heritage. The Jew knows his history. And he teaches it diligently to his children. Uh, God ordered him to teach his descendants about the God of their father. Isn't that right? Yahweh, Elohim, Jehovah, El Shaddai, and how he had blessed them. We need to take our children back to that old one-room schoolhouse where we went to school. We need to take our children back 
to where we can a jelly bucket with biscuits and sugar and butter to school for our lunch. Some of them said that I had a jam sandwich. Amen, for lunch. And they said if you had a jam sandwich, you was doing all right. He said, no, it was two pieces of bread jammed together. Can I get a witness here? We need to take our, our children back and let them see that old shotgun house where we live and let them see the little house out in the back. Amen. Where we went to the bathroom. Can I get a witness? Amen. I'm reminded of a story where a young man got a letter from his parents and they said to him, said, Johnny said, you know the bathroom caught on fire last week, sir. But thank goodness we put it out before it got up to the house. You don't know nothing about that. Can I get a witness here? We need to take our young people back to that old place where we live, where we had to take our bath in a number three tub. Then there was another tub that we used when we'd come in after being out playing, running barefoot all day. And they called that a foot tub. Can I get a witness here? We need to take our children back and teach them our roots. For for some reason now, amen, our children find themselves turning on uh, the light. But they need to know something about what it is to have a lamp. And you had to trim the wick in that lamp. Isn't that right? They need to know something about what it is for you to have to wipe the chimney. And then go, I said, and get a kerosene. Now you didn't call it kerosene. Call it cola. Can I get a witness there? But the Jew ordered a man them to teach about their genealogy. Ninety-four times in Old Testament scripture, the Jew is told to remember the first thing a Hebrew does in a strange land is to build a synagogue. They realize the importance of a religious symbol in a strange land. That's still important, church. If we are to progress as African Americans, we need to have a relationship with the church. Can I get a witness? The church is the only thing that we have. If we're not in the church, we're not going anywhere. Can I get a witness? That once was a time, brethren, when we got all dressed up. The only place that we could go was the church. We had our teas in the church. We had our fashion shows in the church. We had our banquets in the church. We had our socials in the church. We put on our furs and our long dresses and we couldn't go in the Grand Hyatt and in the Regency, in the palace, but we had to wear to the church. Our black entertainers. Can you tell me where did they get their star? Where, I tell you, did Lou Rawls get his star? In the church? Where 
Did Aretha Franklin get her start in the church? Where did Natalie Cole get her start in the church? Where did Diana Ross get her start in the church? You gonna pray with me? Where did Dion Warwick get her start in the church? Where did the temptation get their start in the church? Where did the Commodores get their start in the church? They all started right here in the church. The actors on Broadway, where did they get their start? In the church, sang their little pieces on Easter Sunday. Sang their little pieces on Mother's Day. Sang their little pieces on Christmas. They all got their start in the church. We need to go back to the old landmark. I feel better here. My spiritual roots may come out of my generic roots. For I heard him say, and thou shalt come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall come out of his roots. The promised Savior was to be a Hebrew. He was called the son of David. The seed of Abraham, no Egyptian or Syrian could come forth as the Messiah. No Gentile or Samaritan could come forth as the, as the Messiah. They couldn't pass themselves off because his roots had already been established. Jesus understood his roots. Can I get a witness better than the Hebrew historian? For I heard him and he traced his genealogy not back to Abraham, not back to Adam, but all the way back to God. Even the devil and the demoniac, I heard that Jesus, thy son of God, art thou come to torment us? The disciples, I feel better here on board a ship after he had come to see, declared of a truth, this is the son of God, because he was the son of God that gives me and that gives you sonship with him. For I heard old man John say in John 1 and 12, but as many and received him to them gave he power to become the son of God. Even to them that believe on his name, listen to the first epistle of John 3, 1 and 2. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it know him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we shall know him and he shall appear and we shall see him and he is. Can I get a witness? be an African generically, but spiritually, my roots are in Jesus. 
the son of the living God. Who is he? Let me tell you about him. Over 2,000 years ago, he left the right hand of power in glory, came down through 42 burning worlds, born of a virgin that knew not a man. I said born in a stable, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Yeah, he had wisdom enough to stump the Pharisees and the Sadducees when he was on there, 12 years old. He walked eight furlongs to be baptized in the Jordan. Yeah, I'm talking about my roots. He changed water to wine. He raised Jairus' little daughter from the dead. He stopped a funeral procession and gave back a widow only son. Can I get a witness? He raised Lazarus from the dead. I call him whenever I need him. He's my leading pastor. Can I get a witness?
plenty good room. Yes. Is there another? Is there another tonight? Is there another tonight? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.